Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles where today we were going to be watching somebody racking up an absolute cricket score and wiping out the entire enemy team single-handed in the USS Baltimore Tier 8 US Navy Heavy Cruiser and then right at the start of the game for no good reason whatsoever that I could determine he just suddenly started being a bit of a dick to the rest of his team like this so I stopped recording, and sadly we'll never get to see the rest of this battle. Instead, I'd like to introduce you to Malika 8 in this Tier 8 standard battle. Here on the north map, in the Russian Tier 8 destroyer, the Kiev. I keep wanting to say USS Kiev there for some reason. <laughs> I just, <laughs> just managed to catch myself in time. And then went and admitted to it. Oh my god. Ah, oh, what's wrong with me? Anyway, yeah. So, the matchmaking does actually look pretty good. There's only one radar on the enemy team. In fact, there are only two cruisers at all on the enemy team. It's mostly all battleships on both teams here. Although, there is a carrier in play, which is going to be a problem. Then again, the fact that the enemy team do have a radar doesn't really matter to Malika, since he is in the Kiev and he has swapped out his smokescreen consumable for the repair party consumable, something that you can do with Russian destroyers starting here at T8 in the Kiev. So I suppose the fact that there's a carrier in play doesn't really matter either since he's not going to be relying on his stealth, something that the Kiev doesn't really have anyway. Yes, it's one of those Russian destroyers with an absolutely terrible stealth rating. Even with a maximum stealth build and even taking into consideration the fact that at tier 8 you can equip the concealment mod he still can't get his stealth down to less than 7.9 kilometers, which is disastrously bad. Still, nobody ever accused the Russian destroyers of being sneaky. What they are, however, is fast. Although, comparatively speaking, they're not as fast as they used to be. I mean, they are still exactly as fast as they used to be, but comparatively speaking, they're no longer the raw speed demons of World of Warships because the French happened. It was quite a sad day for fans of the Russian destroyers when the French destroyer line was introduced because they basically take everything that makes the Russians Russian and then makes them even more Russian and calls it French. Bigger guns, faster ships, worse stealth, better torpedoes. I think it's fairly safe to say that the Russian destroyers have been quite spectacularly power creeped, but that doesn't make them bad ships. It just means they're not quite as good as the French, who do everything that the Russians do, except just that little bit better. Speaking of bad torpedoes, the Kiev is the first Russian destroyer that gets torpedoes that are technically capable of being stealth launched. You just tend to not stay stealth for too long after you've launched them because the stealth firing window is so incredibly small. By default, the torpedoes that you first get on the Kiev have your standard, absolutely suicidal 4km Russian torpedo range. But you can upgrade to 8km. Well, I say upgrade to 8km, it's not actually that much of an upgrade because in order to get twice the range, you have to give up around about 3000 damage and 10 knots of speed. Yep, these are amongst the slowest torpedoes in the game. And yet, despite the fact that these torpedoes take so long to get there that you've got time to brush your hair and clean your teeth getting ready for their arrival, they were spotted well in advance and they took forever to actually reach the target. They managed to hit something. Not what they were aimed at, but they hit something twice. That's pretty impressive. I'm not saying that that's impressive for Malika. I mean, he basically just launched them, crossed his fingers and hoped for the best. But it's pretty impressive that despite all of the advance warning that the enemy team had up there, somebody still managed to eat two of those torpedoes. That's impressive. At this point in the battle, a couple of things may be becoming apparent. Most of the enemy team are up there. Most of Malika's team are at the other end of the map, heading in the other direction. This probably should not come as a huge surprise to most of you. Aside from Malika and the friendly lightning, there isn't really anybody else contesting this flank. The team's two cruisers, the Grafspee and the York, are sort of over at this end of the map, but the York appears to be doing his level best, judging by what's been going on in chat, to just get in the Grafspee's way. The Graf Spee has very wisely realised that he needs to get some distance between himself and the enemy juggernaut approaching from the north, 
the York is trying to sail through the Grabschby in order to, well, I'm not entirely sure what it is that he thinks he's going to achieve, but it's probably not going to be much. Now, while I don't want to be too critical of the York here, because, you know, on the one hand, it's good that he realises that Malika and the Lightning do require some kind of assistance over here, otherwise their base is going to be overrun, but there's ways of doing it, and it certainly doesn't involve driving a rather thinly armoured heavy cruiser straight into that lot. Malika, busy trying to fight a delaying action here. I mean, both of the destroyers over here are fleeing headlong from that mass of enemy ships. But the York... <laughs> he's like, don't worry guys, I've got this. I'm pretty sure he doesn't. I mean, the Lightning has taken a fearful battering. Malika's lost a fair amount of health too. And he's used one of his heals. The Lightning has gone dark and he's simply relying on his torpedoes, which is the smart thing to do. Malika is using whatever cover is available, but, well, his biggest strength is his guns, not his torpedoes, so he's keeping as much distance as he can and trying to set fires wherever he can while going for the most vulnerable enemy targets. The York in this situation is basically going to be the biggest, most obvious and easiest to sink target for all of those enemy ships heading south. The only logical explanation I can come up with for why that York insists on driving as close toward that enemy battle group as he has, and giving as much broadside to that enemy battle group as he is, is because he wants to use his torpedoes. I mean, he's on with guns. 210mm guns, by the way. Very big guns by cruiser standards. That have a 17.3km range. He's on with torpedoes that have a 6km range. So, naturally... <laughs> naturally, he's sailed into suicide range and paid the price. The York is dead. And that just leaves Malika and that Lightning, as well as the Carrier defending this entire flank because the entire rest of his team are all busy trying to find and kill an Ognivoy on the other end of the map. <laughs> Seriously, look at the map. Look at them all. Are they even aware what's going on over here on the east? Because nobody appears to be paying the slightest bit of attention. Oh, Angela Merkel's just popped up as uh, Malika attempts to finish off that enemy Graf B. Presumably she's a bit pissed off about unfavourable trade tariffs. Well, he'd better kill that Graf B quick because, oof, yeah, he doesn't really have the option of going undetected here. I mean, the Lightning can, and hopefully the Lightning is. Hopefully he's taken advantage of all of the havoc and fuss and excitement that Malika is causing for the enemy team over here. And, yep, the Graf Spee did burn down, now it's the turn of the Dunker Q over there. But hopefully the Lightning is using the distraction that Malika is causing here to work those torpedo launchers between smokescreen cooldowns, because he has the option of sitting inside a smokescreen and just blazing away. Malika, of course, does not have that option. There go the Lightning torpedoes. Malika, meanwhile, the focus of the attention of... Pretty much half of the surviving enemy team working that throttle in order to avoid incoming enemy fire. Looks like the Dunker Q there is to... Oh, yes, the Lightning's managed to get himself spotted. A very sneaky move there from the enemy Lightning, and also a very brave move from the enemy Lightning, because that gunfight could go either way. They are both on very low health. Unless, of course, Malika steps in to assist. Boom! A headshot. Scratch one enemy lightning. Unfortunately for the friendly lightning, well, a couple of things there were quite unfortunate for the friendly lightning. The enemy destroyer was not the only one shooting at him. The old Dunker Q over there was too, and I'm pretty sure maybe also the North Carolina. He has survived, but he has less than 100 health remaining. He did a panic smoke there, which he is now not able to use. I mean, he might be able to keep it between himself and the Dunker Q. He may be able to use it to keep his guns working while he waits for his torpedoes to cool down, but, well, it's really, really risky and probably not worth it because we don't know where Angela Merkel disappeared to, and uh, if he was to start firing now, she would almost certainly see him, and that would be very, very bad. Plus, it's a British smokescreen, and it doesn't last very long. In fact, I think it's already, yep, it's already expired. So, yeah, continue to keep the distance. 
There goes the Dunker Q, finished off by the friendly carrier. Now it's the turn of the North Carolina, but don't forget Angela Merkel is still out here somewhere. And she's still pissed off about Brexit, so that lightning had better watch out. Hang on, what's he doing? Is he looking for a torpedo angle on the North Carolina? I think he might be. It's not a bad idea, but remember, we don't know where Angela Merkel is. She could hit him with a surprise referendum <laughs> at any second. <laughs> don't know why this is funny, but it is. Meanwhile, there we go, the carrier's found her. Oh no, she's been ambushed in Parliament by her own foreign minister, Eric Lervenhardt. He's going to have a go. And he's dropped fighters on her as well, so she's going to stay detected. This is good. Malika switching fire to the enemy destroyer. Can the lightning remain undetected? Oh, that... That parliamentary ambush really seems to have pissed her off. She's focusing her fire on the carrier. She's yelling, screw you for not ratifying my deportation policy. Because the fact that she is shooting at the carrier is not really the carrier's biggest problem. Although it's not an insignificant problem, it's the fact that she was spotting the carrier for the North Carolina. And the North Carolina is the one who has sunk Germany's foreign minister. Oh dear. The North Carolina, by the way, is also threatening to flip the cap. And I believe the lightning is too close. Meanwhile, Malika working Angela over over there. She's popped her smoke. Trying to slow down and go undetected. Her enraged erstwhile foreign minister is busy, well, giving her the good news with his surviving aircraft. She has managed to go undetected, but Malika's got some torpedoes on the way. He is, of course, still spotted. And both Angela and the North Carolina are attempting to give him the good news. But those torpedoes are looking fairly good. Yep, he's got her. Angela Merkel, German Chancellor, 2005 to 2021. Now then, the North Carolina. He's going to be a bit of a problem. You see, he stopped shooting because Malika went undetected. The lightning isn't spotting him because he's hiding inside the smoke screen. Because the lightning is trying to prevent the North Carolina from flipping the base and winning the game. So either the North Carolina is going to have to shoot something, or somebody is going to have to get closer and spot him. There he is. I think that was actually the lightning spotting him. Oh. There go Angela's torpedoes. We don't need to worry about those. Yeah, I think the lightning actually left the smoke screen in order to spot the North Carolina. It's a good job for him. I mean, his smoke screen was expiring anyway. But he's playing an awfully dangerous game. Looks like he's trying to... Uh, oh, oh, are those North Carolina secondaries firing? I think those are North Carolina secondaries firing. That's going to be really bad news. For, yes, that was incredibly bad news for the lightning. He got too close. He got spotted. I mean, he did a great job up until now. But when you have less than 100 health remaining, the tiniest miscalculation can be fatal. Still, he did manage to get some torpedoes away, and he's done a fair amount of damage to the North Carolina. While he's lining up an extremely optimistic torpedo salvo against the North Carolina there, can I just point out that it's only now that all of those members of Malika's team who were chasing that Omnivoy about 9 or 10 minutes ago Members of his team, consisting of no less than two Amagis, a Bayern, a Leon, a New Mexico, and the Z-31, and arguably the Graf Speed 2. None of whom managed to find and sink that Ognavoy, and it's only now that they're reacting to the threat. Malika here in the Kiev, his teammates in the Carrier and the Lightning, have pretty much by themselves been forced to handle for the best part of the last 13 minutes, and which now... Uh, thanks to their efforts, and their efforts alone consist solely of the North Carolina. Let's not forget what was steaming south around this end of the map. As well as that North Carolina, there was a Key, there was a Dunkirk, there was a Graf Spee, there was a Lightning, and there was an Angela Merkel, and now it's just the North Carolina. While the rest of their team were chasing and failing to find and kill that Ognavoy, Malika, the Lightning and the Carrier were busy carrying like Hercules down at this end of the map. And he's got the kill on the North Carolina. And frankly, I think he deserved it. He certainly earned it. That just leaves three enemy ships. One of which, of course, is that elusive Ognavoy, who is still being pursued up to the north by the Z-31 and, of all things, the Bayern. <laughs> Good luck with that. Hang on a minute, Jingles. 
oh, I thought you said that Russian destroyers weren't very stealthy. Well, they're not. <laughs> so the fact that the Ognavoy has managed to evade detection for this long means he's either amazing or he hasn't been doing an awful lot of shooting. I suspect it's probably the latter. Although it could be the former, who knows? Who am I to judge? Oh, he has been detected. There he is. They started chasing after him about 13 minutes ago. Do you think they can finally kill him? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, <laughs> frankly, it could go either way. Let's see. We've got nothing better to do while Malika uh, races to catch up. He's used all of his engine boosts. He's used all of his heels. Can't really see what's going on up there to the north. Z31 and the uh, Ognavoy are almost certainly exchanging shots. I don't think the Bayern actually has line of sight to do it, so he's probably... Wait, wait, yep, yeah, they got him! Hooray! That wasn't a complete waste of most of the team's resources for the best part of the last 30 minutes. They finally got him! Hooray! Wait, hang on a minute. King George V with armor piercing loaded. What's going on here? This isn't World of Warships. <laughs> I, I demand a refund. Is he going to sail straight into those torpedoes? Oh, actually, no, I don't think... Well, they're, they're so slow. They only have a speed of 55 knots. I mean, he would basically have to stop and start reversing in order to hit any of those torpedoes. Is he still firing armor-piercing? He is. Okay, there's the high-caliber award, by the way. 146, nearly 147,000 damage. The King George V has excellent high-explosive shells. And he knows he's engaging a destroyer because he's had the opportunity to reload once since he first started shooting and he's still firing armor piercing. Oh well. <sighs> oh wait, no, now, he, yes, okay. Fair enough. You see? You see that massive chunk of damage? Balance has been restored to the force. Wait, is he going to turn into those torpedoes? <laughs> I think he is. <laughs> Oh dear. Yeah, that's three. Yeah, he's dead. <laughs> and there's the Kraken Unleashed <laughs> and the Confederate Award into the bargain. And that just leaves the key, who is the only survivor of that initial group of enemy ships that all stormed down the eastern end of the map. Except he pulled a U-turn halfway and basically hasn't had anything to shoot at for the best part of the last ten minutes. Well, he's going to have plenty to shoot at in a moment. In fact, he's even going to get shot at by the New Mexico, despite the fact that he spent this entire game sort of dithering around in the bottom southwestern end of the map. Um, possibly also trying to chase after the Ognavoy earlier, along with the rest of the team. Although it's difficult to say, because that thing is so slow, it's not easy to tell when it's actually moving, just by looking at the minimap. Uh, the New Mexico, by the way, despite being on the winning team, is only going to finish this match with a grand total of 433 experience earned. Oh, it's not fair to rag on New Mexico's. It's not their fault. They are absolutely terrible ships. And yet, here's a little statistic for you that you will probably find quite surprising, despite just how all-round mediocre the New Mexico is. It actually enjoys a higher average win rate, at least on the EU server, than that of the Colorado at Tier 7, which is generally considered to be a much better ship, if not a great ship, mostly by virtue of the fact that it has so much better firepower, being armed with 16 rather than 14-inch guns. But, well, New Mexico doesn't have to fight Tier 9s, does it? So that's probably a thing. Meanwhile, Malika has gotten to within firing range of the key, who's, well, basically surrounded and taken fire from all angles. He's got the Bayern on one side, he's got Malika on the other side, he's got the New Mexico and the Z31 on the other side, and it's all just a question of who's going to get this final kill. Spoiler alert, Malika picks up his final award of the game, Witherer, just in time to nail the key, earn his sixth kill, and put this battle to bed. Nearly 200,000 damage done, and 2,672 base experience. Not quite as surprising as the fact that out of that nearly 200,000 damage, almost 25% of it, 47,648, was done with the Kiev's absolutely terrible torpedoes. I guess even a broken clock tells the right time twice a day. Malika?
extremely well done on a hard fought and well earned victory. Everybody else, I hope you enjoyed it because that's it for today. As always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.